Step into a time before the written word, where the canvas was the rugged terrain and the brush strokes were etched in stone. I'm pleased to welcome you back to our enthralling odyssey, delving deeper into the enigmatic realm of prehistoric art during the Paleolithic era. As we embark on this second chapter, we will unravel the mysteries of cave painting techniques, investigate their possible interpretations, and explore the first sculptures and dwellings of our ancestors. My name is Lucas Lima, architect and professor of art history. Welcome to my channel. Paleolithic cave artists employed a wide range of techniques to create the magnificent images that have survived to this day. Working in the darkness of caves, far from the cave entrances, they used lamps made from carved stone filled with fat or marrow to illuminate their surroundings. Archaeologists have discovered several of these lamps at sites such as Lascaux and elsewhere. In some cases, when the area to be painted was high above ground level, the artists may have built wooden scaffolds, stabilizing them against the cave walls by driving poles into the limestone surface. Before painting, the artist prepared the cave wall surface by scraping the limestone with stone tools, revealing its chalky white color as a background. They then engraved some images onto the wall, using their fingers if the limestone was soft enough, or a sharp flint tool. Occasionally they combined this engraving technique with the application of color. To create black, they used vegetal charcoal and charred bones. Ochre, a natural iron ore, provided a wide range of vivid red, brown, and yellow colors. For drawing outlines of animals, they utilized charcoal and ochre in chunks, similar to a crayon, while powdered minerals mixed with cave water, saliva, egg white, vegetal or animal fat, or even blood were used to generate paint. They ground the minerals into powder on a large flat stone, and by heating them to extremely high temperatures, they could vary the shades of red and yellow. To apply the paint, they used pads of moss or fur, as well as brushes made from feathers or chewed sticks. One of the remarkable discoveries in cave paintings is the presence of hand silhouettes. To create these handprints, the artist blew mineral powders through tubes made from animal bones or reeds against their hand held up, with fingers splayed to the rock surface. In some cases, like the spotted horse of Peck Merle or at Chauvet, artists applied paint in dots, resulting in a pointillist effect. They achieved this by covering their palm with ochre and pressing it against the limestone. These handprints not only serve as unique identifiers of individual artists, but they have also revealed that women and adolescents were involved in the creation of these artworks alongside men. While the cave paintings of the Paleolithic era can be majestic, they remain profoundly enigmatic, leaving us to wonder about their purpose. One commonly held belief is that they served a magical religious function. Early humans may have considered the image equivalent to the animal it represented, believing that creating or possessing the image would grant them power over the subject leading to a more successful hunt. Gouge marks on cave walls indicate that in some cases, spears were thrown at these images. Another hypothesis is that the paintings aim to stimulate fertility in wild animals ensuring a continuous food supply. The lifelike appearance of the animals and the fixation of their outlines could be attributed to this magical religious interpretation. Conversely, human fear of falling victim to the same magic could explain the abstract and unnaturalistic qualities of certain stick figures. More recent theories build upon these magical religious interpretations and focus on shamanism, which is the belief in a parallel spirit world accessed through alternative states of consciousness. Some scholars argue that certain cave paintings, like the spotted horses at Peck Merle, reveal the presence of an animal spirit 
where the shape of a bulge in the wall or ceiling suggested its form. The power of the artist or shaman brought that spirit to the surface, connecting the physical and spiritual realms. Additionally, cave paintings have been considered images for worship, central to early religious practices. By examining relationships between figures such as their arrangement and the presence of multiple animal images, archaeologists try to determine whether the paintings represent a mythical past for early communities or narratives like a hunt or a shaman's encounter with a spirit creature. Engravings of multiple animals, one on top of another, as seen at Les Trois Frères, may have recorded animal migrations throughout the passing seasons. Understanding the physical context of cave paintings is also crucial in interpreting their meaning. The depth and location of the caves play a significant role in their function. Paintings in spacious chambers like the Hall of the Bulls at Lascaux or the stick figure at the bottom of a well shaft may have served different purposes than those located deep within extended cave systems, remote from habitation areas and difficult to reach. Exploring these caves, viewers of prehistoric art had to navigate precarious paths, encounter flickering lights, experience echoing sounds, and perceive the musty smells that permeate subterranean spaces. All these factors added texture to the viewing process and influenced the artistic experience. Apart from cave painting, Paleolithic artists also carved and modeled sculptures using various materials. One remarkable example is a carved figure from Holenstein Stadel in Germany. Standing at just under a foot high, this figure represents a half-human, half-feline creature made of mammoth ivory. The creation of this sculpture, using rudimentary stone tools, was an arduous process that involves splitting the dried mammoth tusk, shaping it through scraping, and incising details with a sharp flint blade. The figure's surface was polished using powdered hematite as an abrasive. While the exact meaning of this figure is unclear, it is speculated that it may represent a human dressed as an animal possibly for hunting purposes. Some prehistorians have associated these hybrid figures with shamans or sorcerers, who could contact the spirit world through ritualistic behavior. Animals were also frequent subjects of Paleolithic sculpture. For instance, a miniature horse carved from woolly mammoth ivory, found in Vogelherd along the Danube River in Germany, dates back to around 28,000 BCE. This small horse, with a hole between its front legs, suggests that it was used as a pendant. Another example is a pair of interlocked ibexes carved from reindeer antler around 13,000 BCE. These sculptures functioned as spear throwers, attached to spears to enhance throwing efficiency. The sculptors paid attention to strong outlines and meticulously finished the surfaces, marking the ibex's coats with nicks from stone tools and achieving a high polish. In addition to carving, Paleolithic artists also shaped sculptures using clay. At Le Touc d'Audubert in the French Pyrenees, a sculptor around 13,000 BCE used clay to build two bison on a natural outcropping of rock. Each sculpture, about two feet long, approximated the mass of a real bison by swelling and tapering the forms. Despite their three-dimensional appearance, the sculptures adhered to a profile view similar to cave paintings. The function of these objects remains uncertain, but their similarities to cave paintings suggest a close relationship between the two art forms. Interestingly, footprints found near this group include those of a two-year-old child, highlighting the presence of diverse individuals in the creation of these artworks. 
Turning our attention to the representation of human figures, women played a significant role in prehistoric sculpture, particularly during the Gravettian period. In the Grotte du Pape at Brassampouille in southern France, a group of twelve ivory figurines were discovered in the late 19th century. Among them, the Dame à la Capuche, or Lady with the Hood, dating back to approximately 22,000 BCE, is nearly complete and depicts a head and a long, elegant neck. Another well-known figurine is the limestone carving of the nude woman of Willendorf from Austria, dating from approximately 28,000 to 25,000 BCE. Both figurines exhibit a highly abstract representation of the female form, reducing it to basic shapes. The lady with the hood, for example, showcases schematic hair rendered with deep vertical gouges and shallow horizontal cross lines, while the woman of Willendorf emphasizes reproductive qualities with pendulous breasts, a rounded belly, and large thighs. These abstract representations highlight potent fertility and have led to various interpretations, including their role as fertility objects or as reflections of a woman's own view of her body. It is also suggested that some of the artists behind these figurines may have been women themselves. In terms of dwellings, Paleolithic people generally built small huts and sought shelter in caves. However, rare traces of dwellings have been discovered, providing insights into their construction. For instance, at Mezurich in Ukraine, oval dwellings dating between 16,000 and 10,000 BCE were found. These huts were constructed using interlocked mammoth bones, including pelvis bones, jaw bones, and shoulder blades, forming a framework. Tusks were set across the top, and the structure was likely covered with animal hides. Inside these dwellings, people engaged in various activities such as food preparation, tool manufacturing, and skin processing. Archaeologists believe that these structures served as seasonal residences for mobile groups who returned to them for extended periods over several years. With this understanding of Paleolithic art, we continue to unravel the mysteries of our ancestors. Their artistic expressions not only captivate us, but also provide valuable insights into their cultures, beliefs, and way of life. Join us in the next chapter as we move from the enigmatic art of the Paleolithic to the Neolithic, marking a profound transformation in human history. The transition will take us from caves to farming communities, where art will begin to reflect a more complex relationship with the earth and the cosmos. We will explore Neolithic artistic expressions, revealing the wonders left by our ancestors and the legacy that shaped the foundations of modern society. See you soon on the fascinating journey through art history, crossing the ages and unlocking the secrets behind the creations that shaped the world.